Hi guys. Well, I don't know if I'm going to get this video up tonight, um, but I'll give you a clue. England won 2-0 today. <laughs> and, um, well, I've just come down on the allotments. I've just been checking everything, making sure everything's okay. And um, I thought we'd finish the video off here. So, yeah, we've had a, a lot going on this week. And um, uh, we lifted some onions. We put some sweet corn in. Um, we actually bought some um, new Nova Browns for the um, communal um, chickens um, pen and uh, well I'm going to be taking you on a tour as well and um, I even gonna sh I'm going to show you um, something what happened a couple of days ago which uh, could have seen the old allotments um, completely wiped out and um, well we was actually saved but I'll save that one for the end but uh, first things first I think um, what I'm going to do um, I'm going to be showing you these little onions that we've taken out. They're a, they're a Japanese onion. Now I've got to tell you, right, it's been an absolute nightmare watering. Um, it's a full plot and it takes two hours every day to water these bloody, they're all these um, plants. And um, it's starting to take its toll on the plants, the weather, it's just constant um, sunshine. I mean, it's 29 degrees at the moment. It, it's nearly 30. It's burning heat as well. And um, you know the plants. Well, the, the, some of them are loving it, and some of them ain't. Um, however, um, we're at the happy medium at the moment. But we've had a few problems where with the onions. Now the onions get so hot, and then they just go over. Well, um, I'm going to show you the onions in, on a tour in a bit. But the, the, these onions, what we're going to lift up now, you won't see these because we're we're going to be putting some um, um, sweet corn in there. But um, for for continuity, uh, I'm going to take you down there now, and I'm going to show you these onions that we lifted out a little bit earlier. Um, they're a Japanese onion. Um, there's some red skins, white skins, and yellow skins. Um, as you'll see, they're not too bad. And uh, what you'll do, what you'll see as well, I'm, once I've took the onions out, I'm going to rake the bed over and um, get it ready for the. Uh, for the sweet corn so let me show you um, what we did this was in the middle of the, the week so let me show you what we did and I'll be right back after pour myself a cup of coffee today we're going to lift these onions up they've all gone over now and the, these are these Japanese onions that I've got let's pull one up let's have a look at the roots roots are very important with onions no scalatosis or whatever you like to call it you can see these onions, they're only a small onion, but they're really, really powerful and strong. These, I love these, um, especially with um, crumbly Lancashire cheese. There's nothing better. But uh, yeah, we're going to pull the rest of them up. And yeah, they're good. Look at the root system on them. That's perfect, perfect onions, then. And uh, yeah, we're just going to let them dry out. And uh, some some small ones there as well, but uh, you know that's what you want. That absolutely perfect. Um, called dishikira onions, Japanese onion. And uh, yeah, I didn't think we were going to get any any of these, but uh, yeah, they've come good. Well, there you go, folks. A couple of nice onions there, and I'm going to lift all the rest of them. And this bed's going to. Um, we're we're going to do some up with this bed, so I'm going to crack so on and gonna clear do it now. I'm going to remove the rest of these onions out of this bed. I'm going to throw them in. I've got a big black bucket here. We're all going to pile them in there, and then we're going to hold the the actual bed, and uh, we'll think about putting something else into here. But um, these onions have all gone over now, and they're only a small Japanese onion, uh, but they're very very strong. So um, yeah, don't laugh. You're going to see me in my shorts. And I ain't going to be wearing me, me red shirt today. Um, it's just too hot. 80. When it gets to 30 degrees, that's uh, when the shirt comes off and um, the t-shirts come on. So I'm going to crack on. And uh, well, let's get started. God, 
It's killing me, they bloody. Oh. I should have should have worn um, my jeans to be quite honest with you. <laughs> my legs don't do well, my knees don't do well on this wood chip. So, there's the sort of onions Oof. I've been getting and uh, we're just going to let them dry out and we can use them. We've got a few dodgy ones and I can't believe out of all of them, let's have a look, actually they're not too bad. We've got five with that um, bottom end rot on them out of all uh, there's about 100 there so and they're not very good to start off with so we're going to put these in in a bag we're not going to put these back in the ground so we've done all right we've got a nice bag of onions as you can see let them dry out now but they are really, really strong onions. You don't get better onions, the better tasting onions of these uh, Japanese onions. Right, so I'm just going to get rid of these, then we'll tidy the bed up with the hole, and uh, the job will be done here. Oh God! Ah, there's a few, a few pound of onions there. I can tell you. Bone dry. Although oh no, you get down a couple of inches, about three or four inches. The ground's not too. It's uh, quite damp actually. Up, would it? <sighs> well, that's the only weed I'm going to find in the bed. Well, I can see another weed over there. But, uh, yeah, that's the only weed I can find. I don't think we're we're doing too bad. The soil, as you, as you get down about four or five inches, it turns to um, it goes from dry to damp. So um, the the onions have done well because they've tapped into that. But uh, yeah, we've give it a good all in now. I think, I think that's 
job done for now. We'll give them a put about put about eight buckets of uh, water on there, give it a good soaking. Um, so as I say the, the job's a good one. What I'm gonna do now is put on some sun some tan lotion because me I can feel this sun burning me to death here. So um, I'm not too sure what we're gonna put in this bed yet. But uh, watch this space. So as you see, that them, them onions are absolutely awesome. Uh, really are. And um, you know they're really strong. And I uh, believe it or not, I've had some cheese and onion with them just recently, and it was absolutely gorgeous. Really strong, really strong tasting onions. That's cheese and onion with uh, with bacon. Nothing better. Uh, you're probably going, where's your shirt, Mark? Well, I'm not a masochist, and uh, it is 29 degrees. It's 20, 29 Celsius today. So, yeah, we've left the, the shirts off, and um, the missus has uh, had, had a break because she not normally has to to wash them of daily. I have a I wear it once a day. Uh, once I've got there's, there's seven in total that I, I normally wear. I've got another probably about another 14 on standby brand new ones of these shirts uh, you, that that lumberjack shirt that I wear but it's way too hot to wear them guys so here I am in my, uh, my khaki t-shirt and me, me shorts I'd love to show you my legs but uh, I can't lift my legs up um, getting old and uh, decrepit anyway you've seen the onions now them um, We've got some rainbow corn and um, I videoed the to show you what it was like. It was struggling, it was underneath a table outside, it had been there for a long time. It was and I needed I thought, what the hell, we'll put it in. I got the camera set up down there, I didn't record it unfortunately, but I'm gonna show you the corn anyway, and uh, before we put it in, and then I'll show you the corn in situ and I'll tell you a little bit about it so well let me show you that now before we do well, anything trust me else not to uh, have the camera on record after all that work we put into it and I never had it turned on but any anyway it's uh, we've we've done a, a block of um, 25 that's five by five of these corn we've um, spaced them out about 14 inches apart and uh, we've done them, like I say, in a five by five grid. So they should all pollinate each other. Um, you don't want to just do them in a single line. They need to be in, like, in um, in boxes, if you if you know what I mean. And um, the way I do it, it all depends on how many corn I got. I could start off with just four as a square. Then it could go to sixteen, four by four. And uh, you know, then you go um, 25, which you've got there, 5 by 5, 36, 6 by 6, 49, 7 by 7, um, 64, um, 8 by 8, 72. You know, it just keeps going on, and it just depends how many corn you got. But they do like to, it, it is wise to grow them in blocks so they, they pollinate, cross pollinate each other, and that's what they need to do. And um, well, as you can see, they're a little bit light coloured at the moment, but when we give them a bit of Epsom salt and um, some of that comfrey tea, I think they'll perk right up. And I can't do no more except for just keep watering them and make sure they're well watered. And do knows in a, a couple of months' time, we might be having a look at some of these rainbow corn. Um, so, anyway, let's get back up to the, the top of the, 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 the allotments and have a drink of coffee. Trust me not to uh, leave the camera rolling. Typical. So there you go, rainbow corn in. Um, I don't know if it's got anything's going to happen with it, but corn needs a lot of water, so I've been watering it with watering cans. I've been pouring three or four watering cans onto that bed. You really do like water. And uh, hopefully, um, We'll get a few of these rainbow corn. I only want a couple of them just to see it, just to prove I've done them. If I could just get one, I'd be happy. But um, it's not looking promising because, like, I, I did have them in this tray for about three, four weeks before I even bothered to, to do anything with them. Anyway, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to um, 
take you over um, to the uh, communal chickens. Now, um, on Monday, I went up to a place called Sycamore Farms and I acquired uh, 30 Nova Browns for the allotments. Um, me and my brother went up there and um, we come back with um, some Nova Browns. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna take it over to the um, to the, the actual communal pen. I'll show you the girls and we'll show you around the pen and um, we'll pop back over here and uh, tell you a little bit more about them. So these so are the, the chickens. the chickens now and uh, the trick is getting past them. Come on, girls, step back, let me come in. They up, up, go on out, out to get, get out of it, you're not running. I've got my camera in one hand, and uh, I'm being mugged by all the chickens with the other. We've only had them a uh, couple of days already, and uh, they're the, the used to me. Sorry about the airy legs. Got to watch these buggers, they keep pulling the airy legs. <laughs> right, we'll come down here. Come on, let me come in. Look at this one here, having a bath in the in the in the mud. Look at this one here. They tripped up over there then. Uh, just show you around the pen. Let me just put my um, tripod down for the time being. So what we did, we could we got brand new um, feeders and water feeders, and we got them all off the floor. Um, that way, we've got no problems with rats. Um, these are the, the the dispensers for food. There's anti-flick as well, so they don't flick the food on the floor. Uh, water feeders, we've got them all hanging suspended. This here is the hospital. This is the hospital. This here, we've, uh, well, this has got food in it. Bags of food. Through that hole there, we go into into a, a paddock. I take it out there in a bit. But um, yeah, this is the this is the hospital. This is this lot here. <laughs> I'm I'm being um, mugged by a load of chickens. Now these are Novas. Well, let's go here. Let's just show you where they will be sleeping at night. This is where they sleep. This is the the coop. And uh, we've actually had, um, they just started laying eggs now and we've had four eggs today. Now there is 30 of them, I mean, they're following me in, very tame. Let's put the uh, camera on the stand and then we'll have a closer look at one of them. Well, this is one of the, the Nova Browns, little red hen, um, beautiful birds. Now she's... Uh, She's 21 weeks old exactly, um, little pullet. She's at point away. And um, so far, we've, well, it's, this is uh, day four, we've had them. And already we've got four eggs each morning. Uh, as you can see, they're very same. I'm, I'm not old enough, got any gri got grip to her or anything. She's just sat here, um, nice and calm on my arm. I'm surrounded by them actually. They're all behind me here and everything, you can probably see them. But um, the beautiful birds, fully vaccinated. Um, we bought them from Sycamore Farms in, um, in Nutsford. Um, I think we only paid about six and a half pounds, seven pound a bird. And stop pecking my airy legs. I'm being flocked by them. <laughs> Put this one down here. There you. What are you doing? Here's another one. <laughs> what are you doing? Calm down, hey. Hey, the chicken whisperer. Calm down. That's it. Calm down. <laughs> As you can see, they, they come right up to me. Um, I'm be looking after them, making sure they're, they're in good health. But yeah, we've got 30 of these little babies. And as you can see, very boisterous. I'm going to fuck that one who keeps banging on the um, on the uh, watering can. It thinks it's a drum, don't it? Is that your your sister thinks it's a drum? Go and have a word with her and tell her to stop. Go on. No, nope, she just wants to stay here. So that's a quick look at the girls. As I say, they're in perfect condition. 
and uh, already we've had four eggs so they're starting to pay us back um, hopefully by the end of next week we'll be getting up to 30 eggs a, a day and uh, we'll be selling them for um, for six for a pound six eggs for a pound that is and <laughs> whoa <laughs> you see not like it behind me um, and uh, you will be able to go into the communal sh um, communal uh, room and um, pick them up there but uh, that's a quick look at the the inside pen where the the, the basically are living at the moment now I'm going to show you the paddocks what we're going to be letting them run around in um, very soon so uh, I'll be right back what Go and give give this last one a hug, eh? Give her a hug. This is how I get them so used to me. I uh, pick them up and stroke them, and uh, as you see, they're very calm. No flapping about. No freaking out. I've picked up three, four birds, and um, while well, we've been doing this video, and uh, <laughs> calm as hell, aren't you, eh? You're very calm, aren't you? You tickle you under your chin. Tickle under your chin. Beautiful, aren't you? You're beautiful. Go on, I'll let you go. There you go. Skedabble. <sighs> you should go straight for pecking the um, the the tripod. That's why I picked her up in the first place. Anyway, guys, let's take it outside now and show you the um, the paddocks. What we're what we're going to be letting them run round very soon. Doing? Hey, what are you doing? Pack it in. Hey, pack it in. Oh. You can see them all behind me here. Look at them. <laughs> they think they're missing something. Are you coming? Come on then. Bam pots, and that's what they're doing. They're banging on this. What you could hear them banging is this. They seem to think it's a drum or something. <laughs> I left it in there deliberately that for them to play with but uh, yeah these are the good that's the this is the interior pen and uh, it's three Harris fences long uh, an Harris fence wide it's perfectly adequate for these girls you can see the hospital there that's the hospital part where we put the sickly birds anyway let's take you this is the this is the paddock what we'll be letting them run round in very shortly. Couple of um, cherry trees there. Not too sure what this one is, but um, we may have to just cut it down because it's right next to the fence and they'll be over it, I'm sure. But uh, as you can see, a nice big area for them to scratch around in. Uh, we strimmed all this down, it was like a jungle here. A uh, couple of couple of weeks ago it was as the the weed was as tall as me all around the perimeter it was it was as high as the fence anyway we whacked it all back and uh, it won't be long before we'll be letting the girls in there's the the half paddock down there let's take you to show you the other part we've we're still to to strim this bit but this one here is a, is a perfect area for them even got a, a little um, current bush, back current bush in here. It's a full plot, but we're giving over to the birds. So this is the other area. This is the other half. And uh, well, this needs whacking down with a with a strimmer. We could just let the girls in, and they'll probably make short work of it in no time. But um, as you can see, that's the. That's the length of the, the inner. Don't let that feet, that sheet there needs pulling off. It's, uh, I don't even know why it's on. Um, it's been, someone put it on about two years ago and it's been like that for two years. It doesn't affect the, um, the pen at all. As you can see, it's got a tarp over the top of it. So they're, they're completely dry. And there's the other entrance there. You lift that up and they all come running out. But uh, yeah, it goes round the back here. 
So, so this is another really, really um, big pad paddock for the, the girls. So that's the chickens, the communal chickens. Well, as you see there, they're very, very, um, very tame. Five days, I think there are now, about four or five days old, um, and we've had them, and they're all over me. And uh, they are cute. And um, earlier on, um, we was rewarded with this first six um, pullet eggs, and uh, here's a little picture of them. So yeah, they're the pullet eggs, so they're starting laying, so it won't be long before all 30 will be laying. And um, yeah, they're pretty awesome, they're a lovely communal bird, they get on really well together. However, I wouldn't stick them with Road Island Reds or Road Rocks because they get bullied like hell. And my girls are getting bullied at the moment and um, there's a lot of egg breaking going down in my, in my pen. So um, I was talking to um, Andrew, who's, uh, who owns... Um, um, Sycamore Farms, and he tells me he said the the the, the Nova the, the Nova Browns are a really timid bird. However, they said the the Rhode Island Reds are, are very naughty and very vicious. And um, he said what you really need to do is put them with bigger chickens. So that's what I'm going to do. They're going to be moving them over um, to my brother's plot, or maybe to my mate's plot, and um, let his birds sort them out. Um, but yeah, we're, we're going to stay with um, Nova Browns, I think. So I will be getting a few more Nova Browns. When, I don't know. But um, never say never. If I can stop them breaking the eggs. You've just seen them breaking the eggs there. The, the eggs broke. It's a constant battle to get down here in time. Um, but yeah, uh, th that was the, the communal chickens you've just seen. And they're perfectly fine. They're all Nova Browns, all at point to lay, obviously. 21, 21 weeks old they are. And they're only, um, I think, the £7.10 pence a bird. In fact, they might be even cheaper because I, I bought them in 30, so I think the, the, the more you buy, the cheaper they are. I think they cost £6.50 or something like that each uh, when you buy them in multiples. Anyway, um, yeah, that was the chickens. And uh, I thought, well, what we'll do, uh, we'll take you on a bit of a tour of the plot and show you around the plot and show you everything that's been going on. So uh, it is getting quite long, so I um, hope you've got your popcorn and your coffee. So I'm going to take you on a tour now and show you around the plot and show you. There's a few things struggling, you'll see them as we go around and I'll point them out to you. So uh, let's yeah, so crack we've got on. a northwesterly wind blowing at the moment. Um, air pressure is 1023. Um, although humidity is only about uh, 39%. Then again, we've got a, a 10 mile an hour wind um, with that. And uh, well, at the moment it's, it says it's 26, but it feels more like um, 29. And uh, I thought we'd take a, a, a tour around the plot to show you what's been happening. And uh, as you can see, these. Um, Marigolds here, these are cracker jack. They've actually go, grown taller than the the lilies. I thought these were a small um, marigold. It turns out they're bloody big giant things. Um, African cracker jack they're called. But uh, you can see the lilies in amongst them. And these things, what's just poking out the top here, are the um, yellow flag harvests. we got some uh, primulas here and um, some... Um, candy, candy tough uh, flowers. These are the candy tough. There, the uh, primulas. Again, all the the planters have got them in, and uh, we put new linings in most of them. This one, we still need to put the lining. I've got it um, in the shed. Um, as you can see here, this is a, a new addition. Um, my mother was going to take this tip, tip and dump it. She said, "Can you take this tip, tip, ma?" I said, "What's wrong with it?" it says, "Absolutely nothing." So here it is, and I've got it as a uh, over the tables, nice shade, and um, to keep that sun off. And uh, it'd be great to do uh, videos out here when it's raining. I can get underneath it, and it'll keep me dry. So there's the result. Anyway, let's uh, just pop into the f front greenhouse. But before we do, I just want to show you this uh, red espelia. Um, it really needs putting outside. These are uh, little. Um, irises here 
and uh, I forget what that one is now. It'll come to me in a bit. But um, quickly looking in here, uh, we've just putted these uh, tomatoes on um, a few days back, as you know. And they're not really growing very much, although these ones are. The, um, the black opal. And behind them, we've got all these uh, um, cucumbers. There's about 15 on each um, on each vine. Um, we took about three or four off this one, but if you start at the bottom, the big ones are at the bottom, then it goes another one here, another one there, another one at the side of it. There's four, five, five, six, seven. And uh, you do go that way. There is, I have counted at least 14 on each of them, so there is quite a lot of them. And we've actually got them over here as well. I do detect the, the grapes starting to starting to ripen there a bit. And uh, these are my chilies. Um, we still haven't done any seed sowing yet. We will do. And uh, there's some more chilies over there, mohawks. And they're getting quite big now. Uh, right at the very back corner, we've got um, a lemon crystal uh, cucumber, but it's too too hot in there. Uh, you can see we've got buckets and um, watering cans all full. Um, let's walk on out here while it's cooler. Um, we've got in these uh, planters here, we've got um, cosmos. Um, all around the strawberries here, we've got... Uh, uh, gladiolas and the same with this bed here there's gladiolas all the way around and mixed in with them are lilies same here, right the way around gladiolas and uh, well we've got a mixed bag here actually we've got the raspberries on this side which need tying up to the um, the posts on this side we've got the um, Black, uh, the, the currant bushes, red and white currants, and right down the centre we've got um, dahlias. Now this is a decorative variety. Up the other end there is what you call um, a cactus variety, and in between are the pom-poms and what have you. Wind's blown that one over, I need to tie that up, I just noticed that's happened. Like I say, it's the wind's pretty strong, so we'll tie that up in a minute. Again, all these currant bushes here, they're doing wonderful. This is the pink aspelia both sides of the path as you walk through, you know you walk straight through it. Uh, either side we've got sedum this way, sedum that way, uh, more dahlias. Um, these are gooseberries, uh, two gooseberry bushes there full of gooseberries. Again it won't be long before you start to see these uh, gladiolas, you can see the, sp the, the spears on the top now. These are all lilies, different varieties. Um, some white ones, some pink ones, some purple ones, some yellow ones and uh, the, they're just slowly starting to open up. Here we've got a load of Cosmos, this is uh, thanks to um, Pam Kemp, she sent us a few packs and we've got a few in here. Um, nice little rows there and uh, you can see the sunflowers, these are called Little Leo, they're all starting to open now. The alliums are starting to die back. There's a few, um, a few sunflowers here as well. They're a bit taller. Um, as we move down here, now this is one I don't know what it is. Maybe someone can help me. It looks like an iris of sorts. Beautiful. Um, big spike and it's like a fern. There's another one there. There's three of them. Someone give them in, I just put them in. Uh, I'm not too sure what they are to be quite honest with you. I have to be quite honest with you, I've not even bothered to look them up. But maybe one of you guys might know what they are. Leave a comment. I'm probably right, but hey ho. Rhubarb's doing wonderful here. Um, starting to thicken up now. And we've got these um, gooseberries here. Three different gooseberries. Two whites and a, and a purple. We've even got a few gooseberries on these. Apples, the peaches. Uh, there's some there's peaches on them trees as well, but I guarantee you the squir squirrels will get them before I will. Uh, roses that they're all done now but it was beautiful the sun's took care of them we've had nothing but pure unadulterated chaos with that sun they're constantly having to water it's been a nightmare and there's a lot of stuff we've lost because of it 
some of the flowers don't last as long because of the, the you know the the sun dries them up but uh, as you can see the the sunflowers are looking beautiful there full of bees again I say we've got these lilies all the way along and there soon be all these uh, gladiolas again more lilies here that's a little pink rose down there uh, dahlia uh, more roses and um, there's a fig there as well um, over here is just the trees there's a load of uh, f different plants which will uh, are slowly coming up uh, just there we've got um, uh, golden oregano, bloody sorrel and mint. We've got them in pots this time. Again, this is another Aspelia. That's doing well. These are them plants what I was trying to identify. This is what they look like, guys. Got these ferny things there, and then you've got these spikes on the top. Up there we've got a bay. Not too sure what that one is neither. Got a few things going on in this um, hanging basket. Uh, these are irises not too sure which variety they are um, again coming to here this is the this is the middle greenhouse you can see the tomatoes at the bottom uh, we've got all the we've been in here we've watered this all the aloes are watered um, we knew, we've got some more um, celery there that we need to pour out we've got the telegraph and um, we've got the um, Oh, what's she called? Louise, that's it. And as you can see, little cucumbers are starting here. All the chilies are doing wonderfully here as well. Temperature in this greenhouse is uh, 117 degrees. Absolutely crazy. There's a few plants over there that need um, potting on, or potting out actually. Um, but yeah, all these, the tomatoes are full of flowers. We do need to tie, tie them all up again. Coming out here, well, You've seen the clip, and um, yeah, we just have to take a chance with these um, these sweet corn. These are the the rainbow sweet corn. Uh, again, we've got these are the marigolds. What I thought we had to put in the front, not them bloody big things. Anyway, um, again, we've got um, lemon balm marigolds, uh, more irises, and then we've got a couple of uh, pots of uh, tomatoes outside tomatoes. Sweet Marillion and uh, some Alicante growing up them wigwams. Looking over there, you can see the uh, the broad beans. They're almost up the top of the the canes, and they're full of um, full of uh, broad beans. As you can see, the pods. There, me girls, and uh, they're very naughty. They've been cracking eggs left, right, and centre. So what we're going to do, we're going to be separating them um, to stop them doing it. I'll tell you more about that again, but uh, yeah, they're, they're just chilling out there in the shade. Moving on. Um, we've got some Zabroon banana shallots here, doing wonderfully. But again, we've got beetroot, that's doing wonderful. A few uh, onions. Uh, we're going to take these shallots out of here, they're not doing very well. This is the sun what's taking care of them. And again, the sun's taking care of me onions here. Look at me onions, they're all falling over. When that happens, um, there's not much you can do. Um, I give them a couple more days, maybe three or four days, and I lift them all out and um, dry them out. And that's about as best as I can do. None of them went to um, went to seed, none of them bolted or all like that. It's just the weather. Constantly having to water them, it's been a nightmare. Same with the potatoes as well. Um, we've managed to water them, but how the hell are, um, the, the middle ones what they're going to be like but we'll be doing a reveal or two in the next episode hopefully we have got um, an Atlantic giant uh, pumpkin here here it is we've got, it we've got to be careful yeah as you can see these are the eggs what the chickens are smashing absolutely gutted about it but here this is the this is the great van and we got it going in here and I think the reason why it's growing ever so well is because of this guy here. Oh, you didn't see that. Backing out, backing out. <laughs> but we actually got another one growing that way. But the, at the moment, the, um, the potatoes are, are actually covering it. Uh, as, as you see, we've got the fleece still over it, protecting it all. And it, it's, you know, you lift the fleece up and it's perfectly fine on sat under here. The good news is, mine's okay, 
bad news is for everyone else, they've all got blight. I'm fortunately uh, very lucky um, that I haven't got blight on mine. And uh, we'll soon be doing a few reveals. Moving on. Well, this wigwam is absolutely fantastic. Climbing beans. However, these ones, they turn out, they don't grow, they don't climb up the, um, the the canes. They're like a bush. Although this was one, this was one of these which we've put in. And uh, as you can see, that's flew up. But the others, no, nope. they grow. They just sort of scurry along the ground. So that was a bit of a disappointment. I wanted it to look like this. And in a few weeks' time, this will look absolutely glorious. Moving on down here, uh, this is the um, Calibris, and uh, they're doing wonderful. A uh, bit of a gap here, we're going to stick a few cabbage in here. This is the um, self blanching celery, that's doing wonderful. Although, saying that, the two, the, the row at the back's not doing so good, and I don't know the reason why that's. But as you can see, the two rows at the front are doing absolutely fantastic. I was watching um, Muddy Boots, he was, he's put a few of these in as well. But uh, yeah, they, 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 they look pretty good, and the ones at the back uh, catch up as well. Moving on over here to the uh, Celeriac, and they're doing wonderful. You, know, you see how the leaves are falling down? That's not a problem. That's what they do, the, the outer leaves fall down, and when they, you get the bulbs suddenly appear, what you do is, I normally pull the ones that are on the floor, just pull them off, and uh, you, you know the, the bulb, uh, the um, the tuber expand. We've got a few apples, windfalls. It's been blowing a gale here. As you can see, all these bramleys are looking absolutely fantastic on here. And the reason why they're looking fantastic and they're not being attacked is because of these. If you look inside there, look at all them little buggers in there. Flies and uh, wasps inside there, and. Um, all the apples are absolutely spotless, no marks on them or anything, no bite marks, and that's the reason them little um, them little fly traps or wasp traps um, from Omen Bargains, two for a pound bargain. Again, we've got them coming along here. Um, just have a quick look at these before we we head up to the top again. These are the um, the the. Um, leeks we put in the mussel butter leeks they're all standing up now there's a few weeds in amongst there guys I need to get in there and uh, pick them out um, but that's what that's a job for me to do it gives me something to do I suppose and again we've got these cara here and uh, we've got these um, penton javelin there and uh, well the weather's absolutely plain hell just behind them here, we've got a, this is a lemon balm, and then we've got the irises. I will be taking the seed heads of them irises very shortly, and uh, we'll be starting more um, of the irises off. Here's a pond, shaded, and it's full of frogs inside there. There's hundreds of little frogs everywhere, and uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, really. Um, the the birds fledged from there. I've actually got a video, so I'll be trying to show. I'll show you that video in. Um, of them coming in and out and uh, hopefully we'll be able to find the one I've actually got a clip of the babies and they were all lined along here so I'll show you them and probably maybe the next one if I can um, find the footage but all the fruit trees full of apples absolutely f awesome here yeah? well chuffed with these and uh, I'm more so chuffed because of the the, the traps and all the working the good news about this weather, um, we're not having much problems with the slugs. As you see, this is the other side of the rhubarb. All the alliums are starting to die back now, so we'll be lifting the alliums out. And uh, the sunflowers, these are all sunflowers, these are all beef. Up there are sort of um, flowering at the moment, but they, they eventually you can see the heads on them now. These are flower as well. Lupins there, they need pulling up. And uh, again, we've got more of these lilies. <laughs> this lily's going through the um, through the the black current. And uh, there we go. That's what the canopy looks like from over here. There's a flag blowing at full blast. Like I say, at the moment the wind's um, it's uh, a westerly wind blowing there. 
So that's where we leave it. Let's get back over to the table and we'll have a cup of coffee. And I'll tell you about um, some other drama that we've had on the allotments this week. So everything uh, looks healthy enough, um, but I can tell you it's hard work to keep it that way. Constant watering can after watering can. It's uh, a never ending job just to keep the things um, alive. The planters and the hanging baskets are the hardest thing to take care of because they haven't got um, they haven't got groundwater that they can draw on. You've got to put the water in, so it's constantly putting water into them. And before I go home today, I'll be watering all the um, the hanging baskets again and all the planters. So that that's something I've got to do. Unfortunately, I have to do that every day, which takes up a hell of a lot of time. Um, and to make things worse, I, it, we, we nearly had no allotments a um, couple of nights back. Um, around 10 o'clock, I get a, I gets a phone call. The back of the, uh, the allotments is on fire, Mark. Um, what we're going to do? I said, well, while I'm driving down, you phone the fire brigade anyway. I got down only about five minutes around the corner and um, the, the fields at back of my plot were on fire and further down the allotments were on fire. Anyway, um, I, I rung the, the fire brigade up, got in touch with them and within three minutes we were here. Um, but the trouble was they couldn't get to the back of the allotments, there's no roads at the back, they had to come through the fields um, from the hospital to actually get onto the where the fires were. And um, two of the firemen come through the allotments and he says, uh, is, are we going to get over, can we, is there any way of getting over the fence anyway? Um, two of the girls come running over with ladders and there's a little clip of the, um, the firemen scaling the fence to put the fires out. Put the platform you might be able to step back over. Do you want to put that platform over? Behind my plot here on Wee Slotman. Firefighters climbing over the fence here now. Yeah, so straight up mate. Just go that way there. Just be careful up there. Not worth it, <laughs> getting burnt alive. Yeah, they set multiple fires. They set one up here and one down in the far corner down there. Unbelievable. Some people. Look at that, that is well out of control. You can hear it sizzling there, can't you? It was definitely like a vehicle. So as you saw there, that was the two firemen actually um, putting their lives in danger. Um, for the stupidity of a young youth between 14 and 18. Uh, we actually saw the gang who, who, who set the, all the fires and walking off laughing. And there was nothing we could do because uh, no one had actually recorded them doing it. Um, but yeah, they, they managed to get it under control and put the fire out. And I was talking to one of the firefighters and he was telling me every 20 minutes, every 20 minutes, they're being called out to these type of fires. Uh, I mean, if they haven't um, already got a problem fighting Saddleworth Moor and Winter Hill, I mean, we're surrounded by, it's like a ring of bloody fire. Manchester at the moment is surrounded by fire. Um, and it's like, we come on here earlier last week, it was like a, an acrid um, red smoke ascending over the allotments, it was terrible. And uh, I, I couldn't even come down them two days when it was when the wind was blowing this w uh, from there to this way. Fortunately for us, the wind's been blowing in the opposite direction for most most part of the week, so it's been terrible to come down. Yet they haven't got them under control um, at the moment, and they were telling me that at nine, um, I think it's about 70% of the, f the 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 vehicles, the the fire trucks, are fighting the fires. They've only got a couple of trucks there, so if someone's house burns down and they're faffing about trying to put a fire out on the back of this allotment and, someone, and some kids are getting burnt. What do you do? I really think um, these fires, these people who start the fires should automatically get, um, get a fine and get a prison sentence of three years. Oh, of, oh, whatever the, the damage caused, they, um, they, they own an house. I think they lose the house and the, the, the money what's um, 
gets generated from it pays to have the um, the plate the, the 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 problem that they've caused put you know sorted. Uh, but that's it in an ideal world, isn't it? Yeah, so we nearly, we were nearly didn't have an allotment. Well, I nearly didn't because it was right behind my chickens, and uh, oh, it was terrible. Um, I mean, the smoke, it, everything, the whole allotments was covered in the smoke, and if and and the, that wasn't bad enough. Like I say, Saddleworth Moor and Winterhill, and um, the smoke's been it was like a, a, a cloud of um, red, like a red cloud over the allotments, and it settled down and. Um, Early this week, I was looking at the soil, and the soil was like a greyish, sort of reddish greyish colour, and uh, that's all the ash from the, the fires. Anyway, um, so that's what's been happening. Like I say, it's about 29 degrees. If I can get the video up today, I will do. But um, yeah, straight through now to the semi finals. Uh, we're probably, I don't know who we're going to be taking on. Could be Croatia, could be Russia. I don't care. We need to beat the best to become the best, so uh, bring it on, England. <laughs> Let's hope we win. There's a few good teams still left in it. Um, so, uh, fingers crossed. I'll see you all in the next one, guys. So, thanks for watching, and uh, goodbye for now.